Katie Najat opens up about her own mental health and body image issues. This is gonna be a good one. Ago, I started seeing posts from elite pole vaulters talking about the I am enough challenge. Body image is something that I have really struggled with. I'll link I've it never like been. up here someplace where it pops out and you can check it out and I'll also put it in the description below so you can see that too. It started by Canadian Olympic pole vaulter Kelsey Abbey and the idea was to challenge the thoughts in your head that are saying you're not good enough or I am not enough. I was blown away by the message and I was excited that they had the courage to have this conversation. So when I thought I was gonna make podcasts, like more podcasts, <laughs> one of the first people I reached out to was Katie Najat. So would you be comfortable to continue that conversation in a long form podcast with me? And she jumped at the opportunity. She says the conversation is so important to keep going that she would, she would be honored. So that's what this podcast is about. It's about Katie's past and history with her own body image issues and, and how it led down a negative pet. I won't tell you exactly the pot. Just listen to it. It's great. <laughs> I have to do a commercial, just one though. This podcast is brought to you by the Pole Vault Toolbox, a book I wrote to help you pole vault and help raise money so I can buy poles for pole vault programs all across the world. So if you like my work, you are gonna love this book. So head over to team-hoot.com and get yourself a copy and let me know what you think. So without further ado, here's the podcast with Miss Katie Najat. All right, we're here with Katie Najat. Yes. I always say your name goofy ways in the vlog, though. I think you, it's funny. It's hilarious. Nagati is my favorite one I've come up with. <laughs> Actually, Nagetto is my personal favorite. <laughs> Nagetto? <laughs> yes. I might have to steal that one. Uh, I'm uh, bummed that one didn't even cross my mind. Honestly, for me, when someone... Pr tries to pronounce my name and yeah. butchers it, but they give it a shot. I'm actually flattered because <laughs> I know what it's like to try and pronounce someone's yeah. name and, and butcher it. So I don't, I don't get offended when people don't know my last name <laughs> because I get it. Oh man, I'd write those down and just start collecting weird names. Um, I've heard them all. Yeah. So um, for people listening, uh, Katie's one of the best pole vaulters in the ever now right <laughs> after last year it, you just blew it up working with brad walker and things like that and <laughs> we we could talk technique and we could talk pole vault and i feel like um that's it's fun and it's really cool yeah. and it, it's important in the, in the pole vault community but what, what i'm fascinated about is, is a few years ago we did a video with kelsey Abbey. she she started the whole thing right the she did i am enough video yes you want to just like explain how that kind of came to be and who was a part of it yeah um so it's Kelsey and I were good friends in high school and then, well, I guess we, we vaulted against each other at the state meet and so we got to know each other in high school and then as we competed at the elite level, we became good friends because she moved to Knoxville and I just, we would just have conversations about just body image and how we were really self-conscious about, you know, whatever about our bodies and, um, and so I think that just like hearing each other's stories of like just the struggles that we kind of went through with that like and, and I I'm not gonna sit here and tell her stories but like for me it just you know I my body type is I'm very strong in my upper body and I don't really have that like hourglass waist that society says is like cute and like this long lean torso so when I'm in a sports bra if I'm not in like peak physical condition I feel like I don't I don't look very flattering in it but like you know as as an athlete you don't want to like put that out there for people to hear but it was something that I really struggled with and I think I when I was down in Knoxville I just struggled with that immensely and I was more focused on how I looked than how I competed because I thought if I looked a certain way results would come from it um, rather than fueling myself to perform a certain way and I think going through that and talking about that with Kelsey and just the lows of that and you know crying myself to sleep because I thought I ate too much at dinner or you know doing extra workouts in my room like burpees and jumping jacks and things like that just to like offset maybe eating a little too much like chips and salsa at dinner um I think talking with her and knowing some of her stories and then me talking about that and some of the other girls on the circuit that I know have also just been self-conscious about their bodies. I think we, Kelsey kind of was like, this is ridiculous. Like we would never say this about our friends. We would never say this about our family members. Why are we saying these nasty things about ourselves? 
And I was like, that's a really good point. And so she came up with the I am enough challenge because, you know, you're worth more than what your body looks like. And I am enough because I'm smart and I'm, you know, I'm strong and I have a purpose and things like that. So I thought it was brilliant and I'm so happy that she did. And yeah, yeah a so, lot of the girls jumped on. Yeah. What, what, so what was the challenge itself? Like what, what should you asking people to do? Um, I think we were just kind of. I guess post on social media just to make it more just out there. I think girls see us as elites and think like, oh, they just have great bodies. That's what I, that was what started it for me was I would see Mary competing and like the, you know, these girls that just looked phenomenal and they're all in sports bras and crop tops and showing off their abs and I didn't have abs very easily. Um, and so I think just putting it out there for other girls to see like, okay, we kind of struggle with this too and just making I guess a declaration like I am good enough I'm gonna be better to myself and you know be more positive about myself and and who I am and what I'm capable of and things like that so yeah it it was fast I mean you, you just talked about Mary right like yes um, so you, was it like her, her abs you were like I need to look like yeah Mary. I think you know the grass is always greener you yeah. always want what you can't have and what was super eye-opening for me was that I remember talking with her the one day and she was saying she felt self-conscious about I, I, her legs or something like because yeah. she, she has very strong, awesome legs. But my legs are long and lean, so I've never had an, an issue with my legs. But I, I've always looked at her body as just incredible. And yeah, she had these abs, which I didn't have. Yeah. But she was self-conscious <laughs> about her legs because she felt like they were bigger. And I'm yeah. like, this is absurd it's like crazy. this is the person i'm like <laughs> trying to look like and she has self-confidence issues to look like, like you, you know? maybe <laughs> well i mean yeah you know no yeah. it's just it was just interesting that like it was very eye-opening that like okay maybe my view of myself is skewed because i mean these are these girls i look at as just phenomenal and fit and beautiful and and if they're having some self-confidence things and i'm like maybe maybe i need to like be a little easier on myself yeah and just see myself more as, you know, when, when people look at you, they see the whole image rather than like pinpointing. And it, I know females have a tendency to just pinpoint the worst, quote unquote, worst parts about themselves. And so I think I, I think just like trying to kind of see yourself like through someone else's eyes of just the whole picture, I really kind of helped that. Um, but I couldn't see that when I was like in the worst of it. So, right. Yeah. So let's, let's try and like, let's go back. And so where do you think this came from for you? Or when did it, when did it start? Um, so when I first started on the circuit, I, you know, was you know, not sponsored. And so I could wear whatever I want, but I saw all these girls wearing, you know, the, all the girls that were sponsored were, you know, wearing, wearing the sports bras and every other girl out there was too. And I was like, well, I want to fit in, but I don't want to wear it and have someone look at me and say, oh, she shouldn't be wearing that. And so my first season, I just, I wore a tank top. And then the second season out, I was like super determined to, to fit in, so to say. <laughs> right, and yeah. instead of just jumping, worrying about jumping high, I was like, I want to wear a sports bra. That's what's important. <laughs> and it's so dumb. And like talking about it now, I'm like, I'm stupid. Like I'm, I'm an idiot, but oh, I had I, to go through it. So, like, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there's that part of fitting in, you know? Yes, and, and absolutely. I feel like we kind of came up through the same time almost. Mm -hmm. I, I remember like my first Reno and I went through some old footage and you were in the back back of the bus and I was sitting there too we we're just like we're the new <laughs> new people here we we're so new we we're so new yeah uh, and we just yeah we just wanted to fit in and yeah. and I, you want to look the part when you fit in and so I remember that that first off season I just kind of went crazy with my diet because during the first season on the circuit I actually stuck to a nutrition plan and so over the over the fall when it was like when I wasn't training my off season it was like I'm gonna go crazy because I can and then I gain more weight than I probably would have liked to and then had a much harder time coming back from that but I didn't really see it in that way at that time and I was still really determined that I was gonna wear the sports bra whatever <laughs> and I got really sick to a couple weeks before my season started and I lost it was like that flu that was killing people <laughs> like oh, and I lost I lost weight and I lost some muscle. And so 
I remember I came to Reno and wore this bright pink sports bra. I was so excited about it. And then I got pictures back of myself afterwards and I was mortified. I was devastated because I felt like I looked like I was not in shape. I looked like I was just really soft and not athletic and it was just not flattering. And like when you think you look a certain way and then get pictures back of yourself, it was like, Oh, I just remember being so devastated and that's kind of what started me being like, okay, I need to eat a lot better. But in, I didn't know, I was not eating better, I was eating less and just, you know, four of my six meals a day because I would try to eat every, I would try to get six meals in a day, but like four of them were like a Quest bar and an apple, like just a right. protein bar, which is not healthy. Like right. that's good as a supplemental thing, but I just, I lost way I was way too lean at, at the end of my season. And luckily, I mean, I, after that season, I kind of just started to become normal again, I guess, like yeah. with my eating and I, I wasn't super happy in Knoxville and I moved back home. And so I think just being in a better place, being home and being around family, I was eating a little better. I was being healthier. I think that's kind of what got me out of it, but I was fortunate because it could have gone so far yeah. south and this is a sport where you cannot succeed right. not no. eating enough <laughs> right <laughs> you're an athlete yeah, yeah right. exactly. you need some fuel in there. wow uh can we go back just a little bit yes um so did you did you have these kind of body image issues before pole vault or did it not really no. um it really only started when i got to the elite level because in college you always wore just the college tank top oh, and yeah, I came down lower mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah like it just like yeah, covered came, everything came and so buns if you're a buns person or, mm -hmm. right, yeah yeah I wore shorts so, <laughs> yeah. I was a shorty short person too so I, I feel you there yeah <laughs> but so and and so it was I mean a little bit because I think every girl is uh, to yeah. some degree unfortunately we shouldn't be but I mean society puts so much weight on how you look yeah. and so I I was pretty confident in how I looked and who I was. My when I transferred to Ashland, I was not in very good shape because um, I was just eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. wasn't really working out very hard. I was still I was vaulting obviously, but yeah. I wasn't as serious about it. And then my senior year is when I realized I could have success because I had gone through this mental block and I had finally gotten out of it. And um, and so I think. I knew that from a nutrition standpoint, it was important to know just what to eat and how to eat. So I got a very basic nutrition plan and, and was in fine shape. I was in good, after that it was fine, but it, yeah, it was, it was after, I would say that, good, that second year on the circuit that just like was the worst of it. Dumped so, gas on, oh, on. It, it was, yeah, Jeez. it's not fun. I mean, you're just sitting there telling yourself you're like worthless because you don't, you know, you ate too much or whatever yeah. uh, like it's just and I, these are things that I would never say to even someone I didn't like like but yeah. I was just so hard on myself and you just you can't it's really hard to to get out of that yeah I was gonna say I, I like I have a history of mental health uh, mm -hmm. on the depression side but the, the body image issue like I, I haven't experienced that at all so yeah what, what other kinds of things are going on through your, do, does it affect like work or just every time you eat or yeah is it it's shower I or, would or? I, every time I was just constantly fixated on food, okay. I was, I mean, I think I was sl like not extremely anorexic, but to some degree I was because I was, I was counting calories in a crazy obsessive way. And I would try to not get, eat more than 300 calories in a meal. And if I did, then I would cry. Um, and wow. it was just, I was talking about food and like all the time, like I was talking about my diet and nutrition and whatever else because I was just always fixated on like what I was going to eat next and how I was going to control that and so it did affect me and I would come to practice I mean I, my energy levels were just terrible yeah. I would take one or two jumps in warm-ups I would take my I would jump my opening bar and then go up to like a PR because I really didn't have any energy left. And wow. s obviously that's not how you can get anything really done in this sport. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I, re I remember like the worst it ever got for me was I was, we had a meet and like after a meet, 
you you work out so hard during a competition because it lasts forever so emotionally like when you're that on you're gonna be burning calories yeah. and I mean you're just jumping so many times like because you take a bunch of sh you do your whole warm-up you do your short approach jumps you do your full approach jumps then you're competing and it's, it's just a whole thing like so you should be able to eat whatever you want after a competition and yeah. I do now like but <laughs> at the time we we after that competition we went out to a Mexican restaurant so you know they had the chips the guac the salsa the queso whatever and I in the meals are massive and I I remember I ate way more than I thought I should because I also just had impulse control like it was if food was in front of me like I just I just would just eat as much of it as I possibly could like I could yeah. not stop and and so then I remember driving home and I was crying and crying and I got home and I like tried to like make myself get sick and I couldn't do it because I probably didn't eat enough for one and I just yeah. like can't force myself to throw up I've never been able to do that yeah. I've, that was the only time I've ever tried but it's like I knew that you know I'm sitting there like sobbing on my bathroom floor like just like knowing how bad that was and knowing that like bulimia ruins careers right but yet I was still also sitting there telling myself what a piece of crap I was because if I had just not if I had just stopped eating, I wouldn't be in this situation right now. Yeah. Like it was just this really twisted mindset that like it's, you're just so hard on yourself. And and I, like I said, I was that's the worst it ever got. And then it just kind of slowly kind of came back. And I don't even know that that was a turning point. Maybe it was, but because it didn't just go away after that. Like yeah. it was still something that like was still kind of lingering for a while. But yeah, I mean, it's it it consumes you to some degree and it like yeah it just it just takes up all your thoughts and you're just always trying to make sure you're you're not overeating because you know you want to look a certain way while you're competing yeah and yeah where do you think that drive is to to look a certain way i've heard other athletes tell me that some of mine too i think it just i i, don't I guess i don't question. know but like i think we just we we don't want someone to look at us and say, oh, they look terrible. You yeah. know, no one wants anyone to look at them and be like, ew, like, you know? <laughs> right. And so, and when you're in a sports bra, there is very little to the imagination. It's just all <laughs> out there. And, yeah. and I've heard, and I mean, I've heard people and guys and whoever else be like, oh, she really should afford, not to me, not yeah. about me, but just about other people. Like, oh, she, she could afford to lose a couple pounds. And I'm like, I never want someone to, to say that to me yeah. or about me. Um, and I felt like if I was talking about it, if I said I had an issue with this part of my body, then I was addressing it and no one could use it against me. And so like if, if I said, oh, my stomach was a little flabby or whatever, I had some love handles, then I know about it. You can't tell me about it because like I already know. Yeah. But then it just became obsessive. Like I'm talking about my body and everyone's like, you're crazy. Like, but I just, I couldn't. I couldn't get out of that. I couldn't see yeah. past that. Sounds you like know? you do now, though. Yes, it's. Yeah. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, oh, but totally, yeah. I, it helps that. So, I mean, my goal has always been to jump high, and I thought that abs would mean that I would jump high. So, like, I was <laughs> yeah. trying to lean out as much as possible to get abs instead of like building muscle that they would pop out. I guess yeah. <laughs> if you want to say it like that, but. Um, but it really doesn't matter. And like every girl lined up on the runway has a very different body type. It's, it's cool. It's, I mean, me and Kat, for example, we're built very differently. We're the same height, but we look very different. And right. there's, I mean, there's no one right way to like, I mean, obviously certain body types help in this sport, but I mean, there's no one right way to look and we're not critiqued on, we're not given scores based on how we look. So yeah, it's just, I, I just lost my train of thought a little no. bit, but like it's, um, but I think once I started jumping high, like once I, the next year after I started getting out of it a little bit, I, I jumped 15 one, I broke that 15 foot barrier. And I think that to me was like, you need to get over this because it's all about jumping high. And I think I just wanted to prove to people that I could jump high. And so then as I started to jump better and I was eating better and healthier, even if I didn't necessarily think I looked the best a certain way, it was like, screw it, I'm jumping high. This is what matters. And now my, I feel like I'm in the best physical shape I've ever been in, but not because like that's my goal. It's because my, my volume, my workload 
is is much more intense than it ever was. I'm doing I'm doing a much higher volume, and and my and my vaulting's going well, and that was ultimately what it was. And obviously now it's like, okay, if my vaulting goes bad, am I gonna like get back into the pits of despair? But like I. I feel like I've come out of that and can kind of navigate that now. Yeah. And so, yeah. How did, how did you learn how to navigate that? It just took time. I think just realizing I'm, I was worth more than just what my, my body looked like. And like, just, did, did you talk to anybody or just kind of, it just one day no, I, cause perspective changed or people was it talking would, to other athletes or something like that? I think talking to athletes helped a lot and, and just talking I mean, I have an awesome family, and so just kind of realizing, like, I'm I'm worth something to them more than my vaulting or what I yeah. look like or whatever. Um, but again, I think talking with, like, every, every girl that is on the circuit, yeah. I've, I've heard make some comment about how they look. And yeah. just, and, and girls, I think, I've heard this many times, but, you know, guys for competing, I mean, they eat purely to just what's going to make them jump better and (laughs) and girls even still to some degree I'm like I I know I'm going to be wearing very little clothing and so maybe I'll skip this cookie today like (laughs) you know like but but girls I think obviously we're fueling ourselves to compete well but I think there is to some degree all like all the top athletes is like well there's a weird society it's like i i compete if i wasn't competing in a sports bra you know then i would probably be like less i I would probably be a little more lax with my diet yeah so i love that you said you had like a uh, support system Um, yeah um i um if people don't know i i I have been was hops, hospitalized twice for depression and okay. saw a therapist my entire life yeah. or whatever. But, and they always talk about the support system. It's like the best thing you can have. And yes. found yours with your family. Yeah. What was there, and, and with the girls you were competing with, it sounds like too, mm-hmm. was, was there any other people coming in? Because I know yeah. there's probably a lot of young girls listening to it that yeah. might not have a family support system. On right. Which is why I want to talk about it yeah, to like, say important. like, you know, you're like, we've, I think all, all of us have been through it to some degree and yeah. like you're not not to sound cheesy but like you're not alone in that feeling um no i think just i think it helped like as i was starting to jump high and it's like it's not about like i started to jump higher not like i guess like what's the, I, don't, I don't know the word that i'm looking for but i guess being so so strict once i started to relax a little bit in that then it made me realize like okay like it's you you need to eat a little bit better and more yeah. real food in order to like succeed and my ultimate goal is to succeed in the sport so i think that helped quite a bit and and i i was in a situation i was living in knoxville and like i said i wasn't super happy down there and so, so i i moved system. home yeah. i moved home and i i got you know i was just kind of lonely down there and so um just like getting out of that um yeah i mean because i was i was living with roommates that wasn't super close with and so i just i i spent a lot of time just in my room because i didn't want to go out and be around them um and so i just would start eating bars in my room and i think that's kind of what trickled into that and so then just being in this dark hole in my room like alone and then i didn't want to come out to cook and so i would just like be like oh there's a bar here i'll just eat that and like so i think just getting out of that situation and just recognizing maybe this place isn't the best for me yeah. right now and maybe it's a little toxic like just kind of recognizing okay like i need to be elsewhere how so did, how did you recognize that just just i could i could just feel how unhappy i was and yeah. my vaulting was was starting to like i was doing my vaulting was suffering because i i ended up going back home after like basically halfway through the indoor season because i had no height at a couple of times in a row and the times that I did jump well, it was terrible. And it started to feel just like my mental block did when I was in college. And I could recognize like, okay, this is this whole energy is like affecting my jumping. I need to get out. And so that's, I think that was for me, like when I realized like I need a new situation because when I was at Ashland or when I was I went to the University of Dayton first, had those mental blocks when I switched to a whole new situation. That's when 
everything started to come back up again. Yeah, so how did, how did that mental block kind of take place? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm interested because um, you, you had an awareness from a previous experience that yes. allowed you to get out of the second one and without mm-hmm. having that. Like, yeah. Um, I was pretty fortunate in that circumstances forced me to move and I just saw the results of that. So I, I went to Dayton and I... I had a coach that was very knowledgeable, but he, he was changing a lot really fast. And I was a very like emotional, like, like I just emotionally unstable, like (laughs) Walter, just like any little thing would throw me off. And so he was changing a lot. And I was in a new, I was at a new school. I was three hours from home. No one from my school went there. So it was just, everything was new. And I think that was just very overwhelming. And I came in pretty intimidated. I did really well in high school, but I, I came in intimidated by all the workouts and like not being maybe like top dog anymore. And so I just kind of let all that get the better of me. And I, I had a really bad mental block for those, those two years. And I, I could pull it out every now and then where I'd, I'd jump something respectable, but for the most part, I was jumping basically two to three feet below my personal best in high school. So what, what, what was the mental block like? Was it not getting off the ground? Yes. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a lot of run throughs. Could run-throughs. not, just not confident in myself. I was very afraid to pull vault. Um, and so my coach after my sophomore year, like at the end of the sophomore year, he was going to leave. And I always said if he had gone anywhere that I would transfer because he was the reason I went to Dayton. Mm-hmm. And so when he left, I transferred to Ashland and, and just getting in that new situation, it was like, this is what I needed. It took probably the full two years for it to really, you know, come, you know, come full circle, I guess, and for me to, to succeed. But it was like, it was, I just realized that that was, that was what needed to change was a whole new situation. And obviously you can't always get that, but. I think just I was too stubborn to have make, made that move myself. So I was very fortunate that the circumstances kind of threw me that way. For, because forced your hand a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, because it's I think I, yes, I think I would have been stuck at Dayton and never jumped higher than what I did in high school, and I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. So <laughs> I that's what I try to tell athletes now. If you're going through a mental block or if you're going through a situation where you're just in a bad place, like, figure out what it is like figure out what's going wrong don't beat a dead horse with a stick try something new try whatever talk to your coach talk to whoever and if it's just not working like go to like I needed a whole new situation I'm not saying that's what everyone needs but like you need to just make a change whatever that is I think that's really important um I I was just telling some of the guys here I I was in Daniel Ryland's a couple weeks ago uh for like a Key West meet and yes and I was that looked awesome it was really I'm so (laughs) I I was invited I wanted to come but just with my schedule it just like didn't line up oh it was a blast just anytime you get by the ocean Uh, I'll just go yeah I know it looked amazing oh it was fun (laughs) it's fun you have to go next year for sure yes I would love to uh and and I was like in a in a low and I and I don't know if it was from um you know, seasonal kind of a depression thing, but you know, it kind of goes in waves for me. And yeah. I was in my head, I was like, I shouldn't go. I, I'm going to ruin the trip for everybody. Oh. There. You know, like that, that's kind of what happens. You play these mind games. Yeah. Like you were talking about yeah. when you're looking at food and, and things yeah. like that. And, uh, but from my experience just being in this since I was like 10 years old, I was like, my brain's telling me one thing, but my guts are telling me something else. Yeah. And it took a long time to learn how to trust my guts. You know? Okay. And it sounds like you've kind of had that same thing. It was like, yeah. your brain's doing this one thing, but mm-hmm. yep. you, you needed a change. Yes. Like yeah. mentally I was too stubborn, but I think my gut knew that I needed to, to go elsewhere. And I, like I said, I wouldn't have made that change myself. So I'm just super fortunate that, <laughs> that, that I, I, yeah, I think yeah. everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was, that was a huge, yeah. you know, like example of that and it happened again in knoxville you said too like that was another yeah it was just in a different way but did it but feel like yeah it happened faster like your hand wasn't kind of forced to, like were no. you able to pay attention to it more i guess i didn't i didn't realize how unhappy i was for a while but once i did i i just i got out so how, I long, went back how home. long were you in knoxville then i moved down oh gosh after i moved down in fall of 2014 is that what the, was romans 
you were still coaching him yes, down there? yes okay and he's great yeah i mean he was he was awesome but it was just like everything else everything, everything else yeah yep. yeah it wasn't the coaching situation. no it was yeah. yeah and just getting my timeline straight yeah Sorry. yeah yeah <laughs> um so 2014 and then that was the first place i went right out of college and then moved back home when was it oh gosh no, 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 no. It was fall of 2013. Sorry. Okay. It was the fall of 2013. And I basically came back home the at, during, halfway through the indoor season of 2015. Okay. So like a little less than a year and a half, like a f over a year gotcha. I was there. Um, and so it just, for the first bit, it was fine. Um, and then it just kind of slowly started to go downwards. And then it was like, Phew. Like it was just like, Ew, and it just exploded at the bottom. But right. <laughs> so uh, it's just, it's just fascinating that that timeline, like mm -hmm. and how that happened. Yeah. So do, do you feel like it's like the excitement kind of wore off and then like things started to settle and then yes. it's like, oh, this is like what's really going on here. Partially. Um, I'm, I'm definitely a person that like gets excited by like the new fun flashy things. Yeah. And so once that wears <laughs> off, then I'm like, okay, what's next? Yeah. Like, you know, and so I think that was a part of it. I think I came in again, a little intimidated kind of like I did in college. Um, but more so, I just don't think I was quite ready to be all in and what that took. And so it was just, I'm, I tend to be a pretty lazy person by nature. And so like <laughs> getting up and going to practice, like it was my job was like this weird concept. Like it felt yeah. like it started to feel like work. Not, I mean, I still loved vaulting, but like everything else that came with it, it was like, it does tweak it. It's, it, it's a little different. Yeah. yeah. Especially when, you know, you're not at that time I was not making money doing it. Right. So it's, you know, it's, it's, you it's, have to start it's, asking why you're you know, driving the, the struggle bus. Like, yeah. The struggle bus. Yeah. <laughs> Just hoping no. it's going to change. Soon, yeah. Right? And so I think just it was I mean, I was doing well and I was I was seeing success, but it was it was a slow kind of steady upward thing. But so when I started to see my my results, I like I was no hiding, no hiding. And I just I was starting to feel like not confident coming down the runway kind of like I did at, at Dayton. Then I was like, I, I need to get out. And I went back to my I was still working with Roman, just using his training plans, but I went back to my college coach where gotcha. he was the one that got me out of my mental block and I started yeah. working with him and I worked with him up through the Olympic trials, just him and Roman, just yeah. the combination of the two. Sounds like that coach helped you quite a bit. He like, was unbelievable. In, in multiple, yes. way more ways. Oh my gosh, he's just, yeah. And he, I don't think he even realizes it, but he was just, one. he's one of those coaches that just knows he's just very positive. Like he, he's a very knowledgeable coach, but it, for me, it was more, I just, I needed someone to say like, you're awesome. I believe in you. Like, and, and not that the other coach didn't do that, but it was just a, when you're getting a lot of changes and you're not competing to see the results of those changes, like it just it starts like to, failing. it just starts to weigh on you. And like yeah. every time you get off the pit, they're critiquing something else. And I get that that's their job, but I just wasn't, I wasn't quite ready for that and so my coach at Ashland was just like I'd just even do like a three left drill and he'd laugh and be like that was awesome do it again right. and he just always saw the potential that I had and he just I mean he just built up my confidence just by just by just being positive and letting me kind of go at my own pace and we were just on short approach five lefts the entire the, my entire junior year and then I was just so sick of not jumping higher that that's what was like okay now I need to go back to full approach wow. and get some confidence yeah. there and so I think the fact that he wasn't like forcing me to do anything pushing me to do anything it was more on my I needed to be more in control I think in order to find that confidence and this is the mental block side or this is uh the this was the mental block side okay. so this was more in college and then but but because he set that up and, and did that so well yeah. then that when I came back after after being down in, in Knoxville, it was like, you went home. yep, this is great. I went home <laughs> yeah, and went home. I'm, I'm happy. There's and no place like home. Yeah, I know it's cheesy as that sounds. I can't believe I just said so it. It's so true. There's a reason <laughs> it's one of the most famous movie lines yeah. in history. Uh, oh, that's yeah. so great. Yeah. I, I, like that support system again, it just sounds like you had it in all sorts of different places. Yeah, I know people, I don't, aren't, I'm, I know that I'm very fortunate and I don't, I, I like to think that I don't take it for granted. I probably do sometimes, but I just, 
yeah, I've been I've been very blessed with an awesome support system. So, did you have that right now still? Because um, now you're working with Brad. Walker. I am. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I mean, my family is still just unbelievably supportive. My friends are awesome, and and it's I've come to the realization that I was just putting so much pressure on myself. Like I have to jump high to prove to everyone that this was worth it, and to everyone that you know I can do this. And I started to realize like they still love me regardless of when I jump my friends and my family. Like I, like I don't, it's not about proving it's just about going out there and reaching my potential. And, and so after the 2016 trials, I didn't make the team and I just knew that I, I was like, all right, I'm ready to be like totally all into a new program that I just totally believe in. And I visited Brad and he was able to address some things and and fix some of the things in my takeoff that no one ever had before. And I was like, all right, this is it. But if I had come to Brad even a year or two earlier, there's no way I would have. Oh, you weren't ready. I I wasn't ready. I, I had that. I had to know that with what I was doing and basically me kind of being in charge, being in my college, um, training at college, using Roman's training plan, but I was ultimately kind of in charge of everything. I had I had a really good day at the trials, did not make the team, and that for me was like that light bulb of like, I can't do this myself. Like I need to like humble myself and like ask for help and really just buy into a program with a coach that I know could kind of take me to that next level and getting out of my comfort zone was something that obviously I really struggled with because yeah. when I was at Dayton's, but I just, I had to be in that place of like, it's all or nothing. Yeah. And I, I know that I have the potential to jump higher and I have to make changes to do that. That first year, like with Brad, <laughs> it was. I mean, you it had an was, okay year. I mean, it, it, was, it was all right. But it took a full. I mean, the first. It, I mean, it it was not great. I mean, it, it was in the sense that like I always knew that that's where I needed to be, even when I was struggling. But there were practices where, um, so I was somebody that always needed a tap from full approach. And Brad told me before I came out there, he's like, I won't do that for you. <laughs> like, I'll maybe give you one a practice just yeah. on like a bowl that you're not super comfortable on. And that's it. Yeah. And I was like, OK. Um, and I just I knew that going out there. And I remember there was a day that I was running through just a lot because I didn't really take it up from full approach many times because I, I was still always afraid to pull vault. Like ever since my mental block, I still yeah. had that lingering. There's still a seed. Yeah. In there. Yeah. And to, and sometimes I still feel that where like I'll get a little anxious going to vault sessions, and then once I'm on the runway, once I start moving, I'm fine. But I can still like that. That never really goes away. What's What's the thoughts that are going through your head for your mental block? Yeah, it just. I, I, there really are no thoughts. And that's the thing is like, it was just like coming down on autopilot and just trying to feel something and then everything felt wrong. And like my arms just wouldn't go up. And like, it was like, I just couldn't force myself to go up. I think part of it was that we moved my step like four feet closer and I was always reaching, but I was always under because I was reaching to get there. And so I was like, Oh, I'll back up and get my steps down. Well, that doesn't work. Right. If you feel too far away, you're not, you're <laughs> never yeah. going to accelerate cycle through. Pull yes. And so well, my step moved four feet closer from full approach. And now my step is like actually on or even out sometimes because I'm, I feel more confident being closer and, and getting it down. But like, I wouldn't have known to make that change. Um, but I remember that this one practice we, I was running through a bunch and I couldn't figure out why. And he's like, okay, like you have one more run through. And I was like, okay. And I went back and I ran through again and he just very quietly, like it was just me and him. It was in the summer, all the kids were gone. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm already frustrated with myself and I'm frustrated because I know I'm wasting his time. And, and I run through again and he just very quietly stands up and walks to the back of the pit to like pull the cover on. And I just broke down sobbing. I've never had a coach shut a practice down on me. Yeah. This is one of the first like full approach sessions that we had had together. Yeah. And and he, he was really good. I think he was a little deer in the headlights like, oh gosh, what did I, what did I take <laughs> what on? Did I like, what, <laughs> what is this? I don't know how to deal with it. Like does not compute. Yeah. Um, but he sat down and he was really nice about it. I was just a mess, like hyperventilating, sobbing. Yeah. And because nobody wants to run through, no, like, I, and usually we don't know why. And you're not trying to I, run through. We don't yeah. want to not take it up. I just never knew what to focus on yeah. and how to like make it so that it's not, oh, don't take it up. It's like, if I just come down and do this and this, 
I don't even need to think about taking it up. I will. Right. Um, but so he sat down next to me and he was like, we're not getting anything done with the running through. Let's go do some pull runs on the side. Um, and I was like, okay. And we go over and I'm doing pull <laughs> runs and they feel great. He's like, okay, do you want to get back on the runway now? I was like, yes. And I, I ended up having a pretty good practice. That's but, awesome. but he was like, so you're, you were just making it emotional. Like there's no reason that you can take it up like in a competition. Adrenaline does not give you that much. Right. Like there's no reason that you can only take it up in a meet and not in a practice. Like there, that, there's no excuse for that. Like you're just, you're making it this emotional thing in your head when it doesn't need to be like that. And so he has addressed more than anything just the mental game sounds like he's and very aware of that side of the, the he, pole vault yes yeah. he was just somebody that once he could feel something once he was just so in tune with his body in a way that i don't think many people are because he could just feel something once and could always do it like yeah. the way he, you had to take off he didn't jump for six weeks leading up to the worlds that he won right. like world yeah. championships he didn't <laughs> jump for six weeks leading yeah. up to it and it's just because he knew if he did if he you know kept his pole drop pull up like didn't let the pole drop get low and just come came through the last three steps and just like got the chest through whatever his cues were if he just did x and y it equaled z like it just every time and it wasn't emotional it wasn't a thing like it was just yeah. you just do this and this and then you know two plus two equals four like yeah. two plus two are the aspects of the jump and then four is the bar yeah. like and Brad, so brad's a wizard there he, uh, he so he, is I, like there's there's brad walker stories we could probably do all day but, oh i know <laughs> like, one of my favorites is i was with jeff coover down in mexico and he was he was like oh yeah you know you know brad doesn't drink evia or maybe well, there's one water that he only drinks probably I think, and i don't remember what it was but whether it was Dasani or he's like he won't drink Dasani because he can he can tell how it feels in his body when he drinks Dasani versus he, Evian. I, like <laughs> I, I think people think that he's a hypochondriac, but I think he is just so in tune. in tune with his body in a way that yeah. not many people are. He can feel the effects of food in a way not a lot of people can. Like some people just might get tired, whatever, but he can feel it so intensely, and and I I mean, but I think that's. A gift to be able to that's that's the difference I think between just good athletes yeah. and the phenoms is that that mind body connection because you're able to do a jump and he'll say that was great do it again and then you're able to do it again or he'll say change this and you're able to come down the next jump and change that right. and he was just he once he felt something once he just it was like that's it that's the jump and so for him it was just about getting as big and fast as strong as possible yeah so he's helping me like every time he came down he focused on doing something and i'd, I'd never done that i never knew how to do that it takes yes. a lot more energy so much yeah. <laughs> i was just I always on autopilot and he yeah so that was so by a, far the biggest so thing like forcing awareness on you that you yes. probably didn't have before like, yes yeah that's so awesome yeah he says the best vaulters are the ones that know how to think they don't they don't not think like they don't go on autopilot right I, um but they don't overthink it exactly and so, that harmonious balance yeah yeah it's a fine it, line it, it's a fine line for sure <laughs> um uh, let's, let's circle back just a little bit yeah uh, you it, it sounds like your old coach gave you confidence mm -hmm. your sports system giving you confidence mm -hmm. and now it sounds like brad's giving you confidence but it's a different type of confidence than you would have had prior yes yeah. yeah that the the confidence that i had in college I don't want to call it a, f a fake confidence, but it was just, it wasn't there. It's a totally different sense of confidence knowing that I'm going to come in and jump high because I'm executing this and this and this, like I have a, I have a set game plan. Whereas before it was like, I'm going to jump high because I feel really good. And like, <laughs> you know, like yeah. that only goes so far. Yeah. Like I, I can come down because I have adrenaline. Like that only, that only yeah. gets you so far. And, and yeah, being able to come down and hit a takeoff from full approach without a tap, no matter how I'm feeling, that has given me a confidence coming down the runway in a competition, like, unlike anything I've ever felt and it's made it more consistent and it's made it just just easier it's yeah. I mean it's it's more work in that by the end of a session the difference that I would feel and how tired I was yeah. was incredible but I'm also getting so much more out of my sessions because each jump I'm looking to do something specific so if I do it then I'm like sweet let's do it again if I don't do it I'm like okay let's get back on the runway and try it again whereas before it was like 
I might take four or five jumps. I'm not feeling great anymore, so we're yeah. done for the day. Like, and so now I'm taking, you know, four times more jumps. Yeah. And so it's. But they're quality jumps. They, yes. Yeah, and I, I see that a lot with college and high school kids. Is they put up a bar and they just try and clear the bar, but they don't know how to clear the bar. They're right. What's going to get them to clear the bar? Yeah. And yeah. and I mean Brad always says like the bar is a result of doing you know this this and this exactly, like yeah. if you if you come down if you jump through that takeoff you if you crank to the shins that's what we call it yeah. like getting that top arm putting pressure on that top arm all the way through really fast like that I mean those are what clears a bar and then you're gonna not just clear a bar but you're gonna sky it like yeah. so I'm just I'm fascinated by the confidence thing so sorry yeah. to keep looping back no to it, not at all like it's. It, 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 it sounds like that's the common denominator between a lot of the things that you've gone through, like whether it's mm -hmm. the, the body image issues or is this confidence. Like I don't, I don't look good in this mm -hmm. sports bra, as you said. Yeah. Um, and, and that with coaches and, and your jumping and your environment all kind of helped with that. And yes. then um, like the other side of it is like your confidence is just different now, you know? And, and the, the other thing I heard is at the Olympic trials, that you made that decision like it's more important to jump high than how I look like you made this conscious yeah. decision it almost sounds like before that you were more worried about like how you look to other people versus how you look going over a bar yes yeah yeah but I thought that I would look good going over the bar because I was yeah I, like I, I thought the results would come from from looking a certain way yeah, and being <laughs> being lean yes yeah. I mean I just I mean you associate that because you see all these girls with abs but it's not because they're trying to get abs they're not you know, we're not standing up on a stage, like doing a physique competition, like trying yeah. to like look a certain way, like we are, it's all function. And so, but these girls have abs because of the hard work they're putting in and because of, you know, the lifting and whatnot. And I just, I didn't realize that. I thought I could like eat myself into looking a certain way yeah. rather than working into looking a certain yeah. way. I think it's so powerful. You're, you're talking about this first stuff <laughs> um, because we've, I've gotten, I get emails a lot from, from kids and coaches in like on, on I forgot what state it was, but somewhere on the East Coast, they were having kids write their weights on their shirts. They would put tape on their shirt and they would write oy. their weights. Yeah, oy, exactly. Oy. So for oh. somebody who's been there, like... Yeah. Well, I remember we had to, like, write our weight down. We had to write our weight down in high school. Like, we had to tell the officials how much we weighed so we wouldn't be on later polls. Yeah, like on a piece of paper. Polls. Well, hopefully it was on a piece of paper. Yeah. You and I, always, I, would, I would lie about my weight. Not because I wanted to weigh less, but because my first short approach pole was a 135 and I weighed 140. Yeah. And I mean, luckily, I mean, it's only five pounds, so they're, they're not actually weighing us in, but yeah. like, it's a safety thing. Like I was jumping 13 feet in, in high school. I knew what I was doing. I had coaches that knew what they were doing, but you're telling me that I'm not allowed to weigh more than that pole. And I get that. And obviously as a, as a vaulter, we get to points where you're on poles that are, that yeah. you know, the flex is, it's way stiffer than, than what you actually weigh. But that should be more of a guideline rather than you have to weigh less than this because otherwise yeah. you're going to break it. It's like there's, I feel like there's more risk in putting a kid on a pole that's too big when they're not ready for it than them being on a pole that's maybe a little under their weight kind I of thing. A hundred percent agree on that but, one. But, and I think when, once you get to the, and I don't like to say that like I'm at a, a high level, but I like, I understand the pole vault more than a lot yeah. of people, you know? And I would say that you're at a high level. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, I'll say it. But like when we get to this level, you know, like this higher level, when you look back down, you're like, Oh my gosh, like all this stuff I thought I knew it's, it's not real. Yeah. <laughs> nope. it, it, nope. Like some of it is, but like it's <laughs> all the ways that I used to think about pole vault. Just th Nope. There's yeah, I had to delete the first <laughs> two thirds of my pole vault really? memory it feels like you know, some, yeah, i mean there was some I stuff mean, you yeah. keep but like the weight label thing's crazy and oh my gosh yeah i like that you just said oi right away because oh, like <laughs> you went wrong. through that where you you would be bawling after you would eat you know a certain thing mm -hmm. and calories are you coming you, you had yep. this thing in you and by putting some tape on a kid's shirt and having them write yeah. their weight on that feeds exactly what was yeah hurting you at the time. and i feel like that in high school you. it's probably an issue for some guys too because a lot of them don't gain weight until college like a lot of them don't fill out and so yeah. if they're you know as a guy i'm sure there's some some insecurities there not that it's i mean it's still relevant but i think it's more i guess prominent in in girls but i mean i think with guys like if you're writing 
how much they weigh on their shirt and it's like lighter like if it yeah, like they you know, the, yeah. they're, then they're gonna be all embarrassed about that it's like it's not helping anyone like i don't think it makes it any safer like no but that's i guess i don't know and like you said it's it starts in your head mm-hmm. you know so mm-hmm. and it kills that confidence yes like you said too and you <laughs> it, it sounds like every time you've had confidence you've jumped well and, and yes high. <laughs> yes and that's but that's the thing is like and safe it's yeah. come from confidence for me has come from things not from how i look it's from the you know the other things that actually hold some weight just yeah. knowing that i'm a that i'm that I'm able to jump high. Like uh, that's, what's important to me. Like, yeah. and whatever is important to you, like, if, like your school or whatever, like your job, like if you're good at your job, if you're good at, you know, classes, if you have a great friend base, whatever, like that, those are the things that like hold the most weight, like not how you look. And right. so, yeah. But I remember Kelsey had made the comment and I know she's, she said this very publicly before. Um, but, that when she was at the Olympics, she was more aware of where the cameras were and like flexing, like, you know, like trying to like yeah. look good rather wow. like she was more like, she always knew where the cameras were. Yeah. And it's like, that shouldn't like, you're that shouldn't Olympics be, and that's yeah, what you're thinking that's about. Where, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, she killed it. She, she jumped so well, but, um, but yeah, like it's just, it's something that we just, yeah. yeah like and I think that's kind of, again, another thing that kind of started that I, I am enough. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's insane. It, it's like that, that awareness, like, well, could she have jumped even higher if that wasn't weighing on her mind during yeah, the I Olympics? Mean, yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't, you, I don't you know. You can't go yeah. back and figure that out, but, right. um, yeah, that, that, oh, man, just I, didn't, I didn't know that don't. story. That blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, it's just something that like, and if, I mean, Kelsey, I'm sorry if that wasn't oh, no. something I was supposed I got, to tell. But. I got another broadcast lined up with Kelsey later too. Perfect. So, so, so I'm sure probably, the same story. yeah. Um, but yeah, I just remember her saying that. And I'm like, wow. Like, so I'm not the only one. Like, did it make just, you feel better knowing you weren't the only one? Like, oh, absolutely. Just talking about it with her definitely helped. And and again with with Mary and with you know all the girls that we've had conversations about this with. It's it's like okay, like I, they they look fantastic. I think they're amazing, yeah. and I don't look at them and think like, oh, they should they should really like I don't know like her. Yeah. Know, legs are too big like I would I like that's just <laughs> not even a it. thought because I just look at the whole image and I'm like you're amazing you're strong and you're talented and you're you know you're beautiful not that 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 should hold weight but you're beautiful oh, because out, though, uh, yes you know, yeah. but like you're beautiful because you're an awesome person and your personality rocks and you're just you just radiate like positivity and happiness right like, it's yeah. just you know but you do hear that negative side like even in college you're like oh she's an 800 runner, you know, she just lost 10 pounds. And, yeah. You know, you hear that and yep. it, it's, yeah, it, it, it's not healthy. No, it's, it's not healthy mentally for no. either side, you know? Nope. I mean, it really, I always say like what we're really doing is a little ridiculous. We're running with a stick and we're just jumping over another stick. It's very ridiculous. It's, it's, it's fun. I love it. Yeah, I love but it too. Like, but it's, I, it's I would never ridiculous. want to do anything else, but yeah. it's absurd. Like you think about when so they first tried it. why destroy your like, mental health over that? Yep. Or you know, over a, like how you yep. look in a sports bra or how yeah. I would look in an Under Armour shirt or something, yep. you know? It's yep. crazy. So um, we'll wrap this up here. I'm, I'm sorry I've taken so much of your time. Oh my gosh. No, this um, is awesome. How, I'd like to end, like, what would you say to kids, you know, like, whether someone's trying to weight, write their weight on their shirt, which (laughs) that one bothers me a lot. I mean, if that's the rule, it's the rule, but, like, it's Is that a good rule? Like, how do you feel about that? I don't think that's a good rule, but, again, like I said, I I don't think there should be as much. I get that they need to enforce certain safety rules that are across the board, but at the same time, I do think there are a lot more knowledgeable coaches out there and – I, I just, I don't know. I think forcing a kid to be on a heavier pole just because they okay. weigh a certain way. Yeah. I, I understand the logic behind it, but the execution is cost? just, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's just a little off to me. Yeah. Um, and not every state does that. No, know, so I mean, they didn't have me write it on, but I would just have to tell the official. So and then he would check my polls. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah. So if a kid's going through this, what, what can they do? Like, uh, I know we've talked about what, what's helped you. Do, yeah. Do you have girls talk to you about any of this stuff since a little you've made bit. some of those videos? Yeah. I think you just have to, I, every day what I would try to do when I was kind of going through that phase is when I would go to bed at night, I kept a little journal and I would write down three things that I was grateful for that day. Like I would just try to like, just, even if it was as simple as like, 
I woke up. Like I'm here today. <laughs> like was I, just, a, you, you woke up with a win. I, I yeah. woke up. Like that's that's starting the day. But it just something different each day that like I was just happy for. It could be something super small. It could be something big that happened. But just like even like I you know had a nice conversation with my mom like just and my mom's awesome kind of thing like yeah. just something i think that i would notice a difference like writing those down and i would just go to bed like oh huh, okay life's pretty good like <laughs> you know like and yeah. i think that things like that definitely help but I, I mean obviously i i'm not a therapist so i can't be here and sit here and be like if you do this 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 you'll be fine oh, like right. exactly. but i think that helped a lot and just talking to people like and for me I could hear people telling me all the time like you're too lean you need to eat more but I I had to go through it myself yeah. to get out of it like I was like no I'm fine I'm eating six meals a day like I'm just I'm like I'm just taking this seriously like I I, I never wanted my weight or my physique to be to blame for why I wasn't successful and I think I just took that way too far um, but when people are trying to tell you things like I know like you half the time you don't want to hear it but like they're they are coming from a good place and right. you, usually they're more often right than not yeah. um, I've kind of used those as fire alarms like that yeah in a, in a good way if, if you hear that and it hits something in you you're like yes. that's maybe just something I should pay attention to maybe not believe it right away but at least investigate it yeah yep yeah. and I was just I was just like, no, I'm not. Like, this is just what it has to be in order for yeah. me to to do well. And but in at, retrospect, at it's that like, time, right? ah, but shoot. They if somebody were right. said that to you now, would would you re re respond differently? If they told me I was like too skinny, yeah. I mean, I don't think they would because, I mean, maybe they would, but <laughs> I, I feel like I'm starting to fill out with muscle more than I ever have. So I'm naturally longer and leaner, and I get that. Um, but I think I'm filling out with muscle more and I, I just think I look healthier. Like before yeah. I looked emaciated, like I was just <laughs> like, my cheeks were just like, oh, uh, it was, I mean, I see pictures of it and I'm just like, I, I, I seen pictures that come up on my time hop where I'm like, I thought I like had fat, like where, like <laughs> what, what is wrong with me? There was a picture of me like standing sideways there. I was like off to the side. They was, it was one of the professional photographers took a picture of one of the the vaulters and I was like off to the side and I was literally like a board like I mean I'm <laughs> like I, it was like <laughs> and how how did I think that that was yeah I'm like uh but it's, I couldn't I couldn't it's hard see when it. you're in it yes yeah, it's, it's so hard. hard when you're in it and you and you don't want to listen to anyone because you have your own logic and reasoning as to why yeah. you're doing it and they don't they just don't get it it's like yeah. well <laughs> I, yeah well I, yeah and I, I think that's that's pretty important though to like have that awareness you have now where yeah. I, I guess I, I only asked because at that time you were like, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just training really hard. This is what a professional athletes yep. do. I have to do this. I just and have to be strict with my diet. This is what we have to sacrifice. Like, So if somebody you trusted said something like that, now I get, yeah. What would you just maybe not believe them, but would you respond differently or? Yeah. I, I would maybe like, you know wonder like ask like oh why do you say that kind of thing depending but, who it is too probably yeah. right but i think the other thing is that i they could see also when i would eat at meals and like what i what i would yeah. you know f force my family to cook like no yeah. carbs like no like just all protein like and so now i'm way more relaxed with my diet and i just try to keep it just real foods because I'm just, I'm working so hard. I just, I need to eat like, and, and yeah. but I, I'm trying to make it just like good, good protein, good carbs, healthy fats. I eat a lot more fat in my diet and just fruits, vegetables, like just trying to get like real food. I, I worry way less about how much I'm eating. So I'm eating a lot more and I think they see that. So, yeah. but I think if someone were to address it, I, I think part of it is my body type. And yeah. so, I mean, I, but I, you know, I'd probably just ask like, oh, why do you think that? And then I could tell them like, well, this is how much I'm eating. This yeah. is what I'm lifting in the weight room. My numbers are higher than they've ever been. I'm vaulting higher than I've ever been. So you'd have that I'm conversation more, yeah, and instead and of just cutting it off right yeah, away. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. And I, I think the results just kind of speak for themselves because I think if you're, if you're not fueling yourself properly, you're not going to jump very high for very long. Right. Or <laughs> ever. Like yeah, you, you just you can't. just deteriorate. Yes. Yeah. And so I think... Like I, it's interesting. Brad has wanted me to gain weight 
and and muscle mass um and i just can't like i'm and i'm eating more than i probably ever have not not like excessive but just like eat you know i'm i'm eating till when i'm full at each meal and then you know i i eat a you know every few hours um and i'm lifting more than i ever have in the weight room my numbers are up and i'm jumping better i'm faster and so He's, I mean, he, he wants me to weigh more, but at the same time, he's like, he doesn't have like, you have to be this weight. But that's like, building he's, the confidence yeah. too, right? It's like, so what I'm doing. I'm just like staying the same weight, yeah. but like, yeah. I mean, I, I always looked at training as just a big experiment, right? We're going to yes. try this, we're going to try this, we're going to try this. And as yeah. long as you measure it and see if the numbers are going the way you want. Yeah. It sounds and like they're going that way. Yeah. And I know there are some coaches that require their athletes to be like certain weights. And I'm like, well, first of all, if you're not a dietitian like that, you're not allowed <laughs> to do that. First of all, <laughs> my great. sister's a dietitian, so she's yeah. big on like you don't give meal plans to anyone that's illegal like i'm like i'm just repeating what you tell me yeah. um hey, does, does she write your meal plans then n- uh no, no but okay. i i've talked with her about some stuff and i i had met with a nutritionist before she before she was a registered dietitian i okay. believe um and i had i had gotten a meal plan from him and i think she was like she i got the meal plan and then just followed it to the most extreme and so i think she was like well this guy doesn't know what he's talking about it's like no it was it was all the things that you say and it's basically yeah eating real food yeah. try to eat about about the same amount each meal so that you're not like going crazy one meal and not you know yeah. that then your metabolism can't do anything yeah. with yeah. it um whether it's you know three meals four meals five six whatever um just make sure it's like a consistent just about consistency right. and yeah, I try to just get more protein. That's the That's awesome. only thing that I try to like make sure each meal I get some protein in there. Yeah, but I'll I'll, yeah. I'll end on this for you. Yeah, um, I just, I just want people who have been here, and I, I really appreciate you sharing this with me because opening Thank you for out this is me. so vulnerable to like open up about some I, stuff. And, and it's easier for me now having seen it and been gone through it and like being on the other side of it to be like. It's, it's a bit easier to like yeah. talk about it, but yeah, I just want people to know like this, I, I'm i very successful now, thankfully, um, but I went through a pretty rough little patch there. And yeah. so if you're going through that, it doesn't mean that you won't be successful. Yeah. I think people just see the positives. And so I just, I want to be as real as possible. Yeah. That's, oh, then that's why I like talking. <laughs> there's not a mask. You always just get exactly who you are all the Thanks. time. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I, and, and talking to people. I think just opening up about it, and whether it's a counselor or a coach yes. or even like a friend, it's it sounds like yeah. when you started talking about it with uh, your, especially the athletes you were with and finding out they had the same yes. thing, which is really why I love the I Am Enough Challenge. Mm-hmm. Because my favorite story that came out of this whole conversation is that Mary wanted, kind of like she wanted legs like you yeah. and you wanted abs like Mary yeah, and you guys it, are in the it, same like, vicious just, cycle. Mm-hmm, like but it, yeah. talking about it. Yes. Like she was, she was self-conscious about her legs and, yeah. and I just thought that was absurd. I was like, what? Yeah. Mary's self-conscious about anything. <laughs> She's perfect. But like, what is perfect? Right. There is no perfect. There is no perfect. And that's yeah. what I'm like trying to kind of get across is like, it, it's, it, I get that it probably sounds a little hypocritical because now I'm competing in a sports bra and like, yeah. but, but it's just the whole focus is, is different. Like You're I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life yeah. because of I'm, performance. I, yes, because <laughs> I like, I'm not trying to look that way, yeah. but that's how my body's responding. And I don't think there's any shame in, in showing that off. I'm not trying to say like everyone should just cover up so that no one has to deal with body. Like I, I, I respect whatever you want to do and how much ever you want to show off. And, yeah. but you know, I, that's just where my path has kind of gone. And so I just had to realize in order to perform, I can't try to like, you can't try to look a certain way. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Katie Negetto. That was the best. <laughs> Until next time. Thanks yes. so much. Um, yeah, if where's your next meet in case people are curious? Yeah, um, I'm my indoor season. I'm going to go to Boston. I'm going to do a couple of meets in Europe, and then I'll be back for indoor USAs. Indoors and outdoors is probably all uh, over the place. Outdoors. Can, I know that I'll do the Diamond Leagues, but that's about as far as I've gotten with so that. So how can people follow you if they're, if they're interested or... Um, yeah. Instagram. Yeah, my Instagram is the letter K T N A G O thirteen, um, and so my Twitter is the same. Um, but yeah, I 
I'm not always the best at like getting back to messages, but I, I try my best to like get through them. Um, and so, yeah, if anything like this resonates with you, like I'd love to hear about it and answer questions if you guys have them. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, that was the podcast. I hope you liked it. Mental health is a tricky conversation. And I just think, oh, I just love that Katie and Kelsey and, and people like this are having that conversation. And it makes me feel good. Remember, there are more than one ways to pole vault. And I will see you at the Reno Pole Vault Summit this week. All right. See ya. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law